What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, we'll recap the NFL's annual league meeting that took place earlier this week in Arizona and what we learned from Broncos ownership head coach Sean Payton and others. All that and more coming up. Earlier this week, the NFL held its annual league meeting in Phoenix, Arizona. Broncos owner and CEO Greg Penner, owner Kerry Walton Penner, head coach Sean Payton, general manager George Payton, team president Damani Leach, and several others were all in attendance. Sean Payton opened up the week on Monday at the AFC Coaches Breakfast and talked about how it feels to be back at the annual league meeting. I've done this a long time, and I know a lot of the people the coaches, um, a lot of the owners, not just our own ownership group, many of the other owners, uh, uh, some of which I've worked for and some I've just known for 16 years as a head coach and, and 22 years total. So it's good to be back and see, uh, uh, and, and not just, it, it's it's everyone. It's the, this is the, it's not the circus, but it's, the same group of people you see at the combine for the most part, a little bit different. <laughs> Owners meetings, um, we'll have a draft and uh, it's good to see those people and, and good to see a lot of the media people that I've worked with before. Some of you, this is the first time and um, all good. He went on to talk about the team's free agency strategy, his preseason approach and several other topics. One of those being the rumors surrounding wide receivers, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. I would say a number of teams have called on those players. Uh, but I, I said it yesterday, that it's not something we're interested in doing. So you'd have to do your homework and you can do, you know, figure out how it all got started. But uh, obviously there's a, in the off season, there's a, everyone wants to be on top of any type of transaction. I understand that. Um, and it, it, it'll continue, I'm sure. As we get closer to the draft, if you really look at the draft and you look at the receiver depth in the draft, it's not a real deep draft. So if you're a team that's looking for receivers, we're not the only team people called. You know, I'm sure Houston with Brandon Cooks, other players like that. It's, it's pretty common in the offseason, I think. And during general manager George Payton's media scrum, he talked about how the team executed their free agency plan and how they're looking to prepare for the NFL draft. You know, going back to when we made the you know trade for Russ, we knew that one one of these years we'd have to be aggressive. You know, and and this was kind of and then when we got Sean here and we and we met and you know if there were players there that uh, had positions of need, we were going to be aggressive. You know, we don't have the picks; we only have five picks, and and so we were aggressive, and you know we had a plan, and I I felt like we executed that plan. You know, we certainly have to make some hay. You know, in those top thirds and really all the picks, Mike, we only have five, and so. Uh, really since free agency finished, you know, Sean, myself and, and a couple of our scouts, we've sat in the dark room and just, we've hit the draft. I didn't go to any pro days and we just focused on, on the draft and specifically, you know, those top threes. And, and, uh, so we're really gonna have to make hay. Plus owner and CEO, Greg Penner and team president, Damani Leach spoke on the future of Empower Field at Mile High, including the current renovations that are taking place in the stadium market research survey that was sent out to season ticket holders. Currently things are, as we say, I tell Greg every two weeks, I give Greg update on where we are. We are on schedule and on budget. Uh, the, the scoreboard is down. Uh, as you saw, Bucky is down. Bucky's, you know, safely being taken care of, which we, we appreciate. I think we made some videos of that, but Stadium uh, scoreboards down, you know, we'll come back up towards the end of the summer, 70% bigger, really excited about that. Um, we're doing the, the suite renovations in blocks. I think we were really conscious of trying to maximize how many suites we have available for the concert series this summer. Uh, so that's progressing well. Looking at a lot of designs, we're almost finalized with our designs interior for our team store and the new stadium club, which which will be really great when they come together. Yeah, it was it was an interesting process for us this fall. We had a chance to visit. Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously the games that we played on the road, but then uh, had sort of intentional visits where we spent more time at probably five or six stadiums. Um, we didn't come away from any of those saying this is this would be a you know if we decide to go down the path of a new stadium, Denver, saying this would be the perfect stadium for us. Uh, I think it's really unique to the market. Um, you know, we'd want something that's inherently Colorado, the Broncos, um, but we saw a lot of um, interesting aspects from 
different types of roof covers, different types of uh, fields, um, different mix of seats. Uh, so it was a really, really interesting process for us. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio is a fellow team reporter, Phil Milani. Phil was down in Arizona this past week at the annual league meetings. Phil, it's great to have you on. Thanks for having me on. Do I look like I've been in the sun a you little bit? You do look a little tanner, I do yeah. have to say. I had a nice time down there yeah. uh, at the Arizona Billmore. Weather was beautiful. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a good few days. Yeah, you guys were down there for a while. I mean, yeah. Saturday to Wednesday, Yep, I believe. How was the yep. week overall? Uh, really good. I uh, got a chance to talk with uh, all of the Broncos leadership, business mm -hmm. side, football side, uh, the ownership group, uh, President uh, Damani Leach, George Payton, Sean Payton. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good week. That's great. I'm so glad it was, Phil. Yeah. I know earlier in their show, we heard from Sean Payton, George Payton, owner and CEO Greg Penner and Damani Leach, like you just mentioned. But, you know, through all of their press conferences and scrums that they had, I guess, what was your main takeaways just from the week and everything that they talked about down there? I think that uh, one takeaway was that it seemed like everybody was on this same page, mm -hmm. you know, uh, talking to Sean Payton about, you know, the guys coming back in the offseason program starting here. Oh. Uh, his message about that was, hey, it's time to get to work with these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, he And he talked about conditioning and the weight room. I mean, that was a, a big priority for him. And he said last year the injuries got out of control. And yeah. to try and prevent that, you know, let's get this team really – in good shape and um greg penner was asked about you know expectations for the season and instead of saying oh make the playoffs or hey at least 10 wins or he didn't say any of that stuff he just said we're really focused on the process here mm -hmm. and, and that starts with getting to work here with the offseason program and um i i thought that that was really good that you know greg penner sean payton you know business football they're on the same page with yeah, regard to what, what it's going to take to get this thing turned around. Mm -hmm. And um, the other takeaway was from Sean Payton's uh, coach's breakfast yeah. uh, availability there. Uh, I think that he really set the tone with uh, some of his comments there. You know, he talked about studying last year's team and that the film was really hard to watch. Yeah. You know, and he talked about like the kicking game not being good enough and a focus on improving special, special teams. teams. Yeah. And um, he's, you know, and he was really direct with his comments, I felt like. And so I think if you're a player on this roster and you're about to come back for the offseason program, I think you heard the message from Sean Payton uh, this week at the owners meetings. Just him, he, you know, he said, if it sounds like I'm complimenting the defense and being hard on the offense and special teams, it's because I am. So, I uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I think those guys will hear the message loud and clear. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sean Payton is an expert at motivating. Right. You know, this is what makes him such a great coach is that he gets the most out of his players. And uh, I think that he's, he really set a tone th this week. I think Broncos fans should be really excited based off of that. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, he talked about the preseason. Somebody asked, hey, will the starters play in the preseason? Right. And he was like, what are you talking about? Of course they're going to play in the mm -hmm. preseason. And he talked about, um, you know, the last time I, I looked, we played tackle football. You know, <laughs> we got to get these guys ready to play tackle football. Mm -hmm. um, and you even saw that with the moves the Broncos made in free agency. They got big guys. Yeah, they got did. strong guys. They got athletic guys, yep. you know. Um, he said that Samaj P. Ryan, the, the running back that yep. he signed from the Bengals, he's built to last, mm -hmm. you know. he. This, these are things that uh, uh, he's not doing – by accident you know he's yeah. got a plan for all of the free agents and and th there's a reason why those guys are now broncos you know so yeah. all of this is all building towards the same message and that's hey it's time to get to work it's time to uh focus on being physical being big mm -hmm. and uh, that's how you win football games so Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Phil, I know there was also a lot of talk about Mike Shanahan and the hope yeah. that he'll get voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I know you talked to several national media members about it. What was their consensus? Uh, really talked to a lot of prominent uh, media yeah. members. Uh, Peter King from mm -hmm. NBC Sports, Albert Breer from the MMQB, and then uh, our friend Adam Schefter mm -hmm. from ESPN. And uh, all of those guys know what Mike Shanahan meant to the NFL. I mean, uh, you talk about the back-to-back -back Super Bowls. He's the only coach who's eligible for the Hall of Fame, who's won back-to-back -back Super Bowls and is not in the Hall of right. Fame. 
Um, so that alone, mm -hmm. you know, you would think is, hey, that's enough there. But you look at the impact that he's made on the NFL today uh, with the, his offensive system being adopted by so many coaches. Mm -hmm. You look at his coaching tree. Uh, I mean, he's still involved as an advisor with his son out there in uh, California, California with Kyle Shanahan. So, you know, he he's left a lasting impact. And um, just his time with the Broncos, one of the winningest coaches in NFL history, uh, you know, and really helped quarterbacks toward the end of their careers. You know, like Steve Young with the 49ers, he really helped there. Mm -hmm. John Elway, obviously Elway, yeah. here. And, um, you know, he even took uh, Jake Plummer to an AFC championship game um, in the mid-2000s. Yeah. So I, I really think that when you think about Mike Shanahan, he's one of the best coaches of all time, and he belongs mm -hmm. in the Hall of Fame. And that's what a lot of these media guys were saying the same thing. Um, you know, I think that Peter King said something like his footprints are in the sand of the NFL, you know, like, <laughs> Great way to put he, it. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like he's, he's left his mark, you know, and um, I think that coaches like that, th their legacy deserves to live on in Canton. Yeah, I agree. I know owner and CEO Greg Penner also spoke on it. So everyone take a listen to what he had to say. Very hopeful. And, and, um, uh, I had a chance to get to know Mike this fall. He's been a great sounding board uh, for me, especially in the coaching search. Um, you know, he's one of the winningest coaches in, in uh, football history, very respected. Uh, you look at uh, his uh, coaching tree and people that he's developed um, and his schemes and, and who's running those across the league. Uh, he won back-to-back -back Super Bowls and, and um, we're very hopeful that and expect that um, uh, that he'll have success there. Phil, what did you think about what Greg Penner had to say? Yeah, I think that that's important for him to come in and recognize, you know, awesome. um, what the Broncos past has been about, mm -hmm. you know, and for him to really be an advocate there for Mike Shanahan, yeah. I think says a lot. Uh, just knowing the rich tradition that's here in Denver and, and to be able to get another uh, person into the Hall of Fame, that's a, a big priority for uh, Greg Penner. So I thought that was a nice thing to, you know, for him to come in and be like, look, what, what's happened here in the past is really important. Yeah. And uh, and he also said that, uh, you know, Mike was a part of the coaching search that the Broncos just had. That's right. You yeah. know, and obviously Mike Shanahan and Sean Payton both went to Eastern Illinois. Yeah. So easy to stump for uh, a fellow alumnus there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, that's a good idea, though, right? Like you're looking for a new head coach. Let's lean on some of the resources that are right, right here under your nose. Yeah. yeah. So Mike Shanahan knows what it takes to win a Super Bowl. Right. Hey, uh, what do you think we should be looking for? And uh uh, I think that's a big reason why Sean Payton is here now, too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a couple more things, Phil. I know NFL owners approved a couple new proposals at the league meeting this week as well. Mm -hmm. um, they approved that teams will be allowed to play two short week Thursday night football games in a season. And yeah. that players will now be allowed to wear the number zero. Yeah. What do we think? Uh, so first on the Thursday night, yeah. um, you know, I think that uh, Thursday night is a big priority for the NFL mm -hmm. right now. Uh, you know, they had the new partnership with Amazon last year and streaming. Yeah. They're trying to hit a younger audience with that so they want those games to be really competitive they want that to be good football and I think that at first playing on Thursday night was sort of like whoa like the the next week is already here but yeah. I think fans have now gotten used to it mm -hmm. you know and Thursday night now they th are expecting football yeah. and so it's no, sort of definitely. become ingrained in the uh, way that we consume the sport and right. uh, they want those to be good matchups I mean it's easy for us here in town to look back to that Broncos and Colts matchup last year. Uh, that was a rough one. That was a rough game. Um, Broncos fans were even leaving the stadium before overtime started, you know. Right. And Al Michaels, uh, his legendary quips, uh, you know, uh, the, the Broncos and Colts were victim to that uh, <laughs> also. So they want that to be competitive. So um, yeah. I think they want those matchups to be really strong. So uh, it makes sense that they, they're going to allow – uh, good teams they want right. play a couple of games. Yeah, I was um, going to say, as part of the change, you know, not all teams will be guaranteed to play a Thursday night game now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So they want good matchups there. They want that to be compelling television um, uh, because Thursday night, it's the only game that's on TV yeah. and it's streaming and it's hitting a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that's a big priority. Now, 
the f- the players are probably like, what the heck? You know, why yeah. Why do we have to two play short two short weeks, yeah. you know? But the NFL keeps so much data and statistics, and they use, they really use that to drive their decision-making. Right. And according to their data, it says that there's not a higher tendency of injuries on these short weeks. So um, with that data backing up what they're saying, they're saying, look, this isn't a thing that's leading to injuries. So mm-hmm. um, uh, the other thing is I think that the players enjoy the 10 days off after, after. you know, yeah. where I know we enjoy that. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Like sort of like a little mini bye week there yeah, definitely. afterwards. So mm-hmm. um, there's a balance there. It's a short week, but uh, you get the, the payoff on the other side of it. So uh, if they can make that product better, why not? Why not? Um, so I think that that's one thing. And then the zero, yeah. that's going to be interesting. You I know? don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. I wonder if all teams will adopt this idea yeah. or if like, you know, like I could totally see a situation where champagne's like, we're not wearing zero, you know, and that that's sort of just a policy. Mm-hmm. But um, and then you it, see teams like the Jaguars immediately afterwards. Like, yeah, Ridley wants to wear zero. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's sort of a flashy number, you know, it is. Um, and, you know, like up at CU Coach Prime, you know, he's like, hey, if you want to wear a single digit, you got to be that guy. Gotta earn it. You got to yeah. earn it. You know, so I wonder if maybe some people will take that approach like hey, zero right. is a special number or something like that. I, I that. mean, the the number thing has been changed changing you know here like randy gregory for the broncos wears five yeah you know so Mm -hmm. uh you wear a single digit there so uh, i think that uh, it's just a a natural evolution of the game where you know it's fun whatnot um i i I don't mind it but maybe some purists or maybe some people might say hey zero that doesn't look right out there so we'll have to see how the broncos handle it Busy work for you down there, Phil. Yeah, but it's yeah. good stuff. I mean, I no, like that there's a, a lot of league issues. There's a lot of Broncos issues. Right. You know, obviously talking about stadium renovations and yep. all kinds of different things there. So um, I think that it's a good week and you learn a lot. And it had been kind of a quiet little uh, bit there for the Broncos. It had been, so, so it was nice. Yeah, uh, good to hear from these guys. And uh, and then it's also appreciated to be down there with them. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate yeah. you coming on the podcast and sharing your insight from the league meeting. Well, Thank you very much, Sydney. I got to get back out under the sand, uh, under the, the sun. sun. It's supposed to be I warm know. this weekend. I Perfect know. I got to get it. back. I'll lose yeah. this stand. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, thank you. Thanks, Sid. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on DenverBroncos.com and the Denver Broncos YouTube next week for another episode. See you all then.